Sun Devils wide receiver Caleb Black joins me today on a special edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. You are Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. A shout out to my everydayers who are here every day, and thanks for making us your first listen of the day. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications wherever you're getting your podcast, and stay in touch with the show by following me on Twitter at RichieBrad36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as playoffs wind down and sports stop sporting like we want them to. Don't worry, this summer FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right, there's something for everybody every day all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And today we are joined by Sun Devils wide receiver, Caleb Black. Caleb, I am thrilled to be able to sit down and talk with you. Thanks so much for uh, for giving me the time to join us. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Caleb, you are redshirt freshman. You were able to get on the field a handful of times last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, not a huge role in the offense, but still, what was it like to kind of get that first taste in that first experience of power five football here um to me it was just a great experience to be able to get on the field and get my feet with you know what i'm saying um and be able to at least try to contribute and be as much as a help as i can to the team um i feel like it was a good learning experience definitely for me because certain things like certain plays that um that i was in on and got to and got to play and got to see it was like certain stuff that I can take with me to the next season and be able to um, capitalize on that. So I think it was just a good learning experience. And it was definitely a challenging season for for mm-hmm. you and for the team as a whole, only three wins. But this was definitely a team that fought game after game, down after down. They, they looked like a much better group than a three-win team. What was – what was – everything that would go through your mind during the week to week basis. Like obviously it's not the easiest thing in the world to be losing the games, but it felt like the team came out every week and had that mentality of it's a brand new week. It's a brand new season. Each season is one game. We're focused on the game in front of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, Honestly, I give a lot of props to our coaches and, um, and, you know the people that we had around us to keep us um to keep us grounded and like really just focus on the work part of it i feel like that was a big a big deal because you know like you said we was coming out every week with the same mindset ready to go um i feel like it was just because that was just a narrative that we was pushing like the record really didn't mean nothing but as long as we got one percent better every day then that's all we could. That's all we could ask for. For what were kind of the trials that you, as an individual, went through this past year? Um, for sure, like with um gaining weight, that would be the first one. Um, coming in, you know, like me for me, I know I was like. 155 when I first came in, but just being able to gain weight and then maintain it and still, you know, do everything that they require. I say that was one of the biggest challenges for me, honestly, but um, also being in my playbook more, um, you know what I'm saying, making connections. I feel like I had to open up a lot. Uh, Yeah, like in that maturity stage, you know, coming from high school, leaving your friends. Uh, yeah. With the putting on weight, with the taking a look at the playbook, how far ahead do you think you are right now compared to where you were when you first got here? 
Oh yeah. Um, from when I first got here, I, I I feel like I made a huge jump, like a huge jump. Uh, I'm way far ahead from when I first got in here. You know, been working with a lot of the older guys and taking a lot in from the coaches. You know what I'm saying, doing a lot of work on my own, just knowing that from the first year, I it's like it's really on you what you do. Like, or I'm saying being able to be trusted by your teammates is all on you. So you got to put that extra work in. What has that extra work looked like for you? Obviously talking about bulking up and adding more to uh, more to your frame, studying the playbook more. What are some of the things that you're working on in, uh, in your routine as a receiver? Is it a lot of footwork drills? Is it playing with the jugs machine? What are some of the things that you've been working on to get yourself ready for year two? Yeah, it was like, it's it's a handful of things that I'm, that I've been doing before, but that I've been trying to um, do more of since I've gotten to college, of course, but uh, getting catches every day, um, um, catching with the tennis balls, um, full word drills, of course, um, you know, like everything, everything that we, that we do during, um, during our time on the field, I, I just take that and then add that to whatever I can do to, um, help myself in training when I'm training by myself, whether it be footwork or hands or weight training, it, it really, really don't matter. Is there anything that you would say is the most important thing that you're working on getting to that next level? Obviously, there's a group of things that you're working on, the adding weight, the route running, the catching, the playbook, learning from some of the mentors. Is there anything if you were to make it a checklist and it's like, that's the number one priority for me, that by the end of the summer, when we get into training camp, this is the one thing that I want to be way better at than I was before. Yeah, for me, um, I want to be able to know the playbook like the back of my hand so I could play to the best of my ability, for real. I think that was one of the things that I had a problem with last year. Um, it was like some plays was just not fully in check with me. And then I'll be thinking about the play too much and not what I should be doing in the play. You know, like it's just stuff, it's just like little stuff like that. Like, but if 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 I would have to make a checklist, that would be at the top. And then right after that would be gaining weight. What is Marcus Arroyo's scheme look like compared to Bo Baldwin's was last year? Is it a big difference or is it a lot of the same terminology makes it a little easier to pick up because going from one offensive coordinator to a new offensive coordinator in only one year, isn't going to be easy for anyone, but what's that, what's that process look like for you? Uh, honestly, it hasn't been as hard as you may think or like people may think, but I give a lot of props to Coach Royal because he's worked with us a lot and then made sure we've gotten as much as as much work as possible with each other and with our team and with our coaches, you know, player individuals and all the meetings, you know what I'm saying? He really he really just makes sure that we all on the same page. Anytime anytime we do um football or anything football related, he making sure that we know everything to the best of our ability so we can go out there and execute. And that's really his main thing is execution. So, you know, starting off fast, that's really important to Coach Royal. But he's been making it, he's been making it easy. It hasn't been a hard transition for real. We'll talk more about the coaches and the quarterback changes here in just a moment as we continue our conversation with Caleb Black. This is the Locked On Sun Devils Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I love sports and I love them so much that I never want them to stop, but the playoffs are winding down and we're getting fewer games. The sports aren't sporting like I want them to, but FanDuel will keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. 
And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everybody every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on right now and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Wherever you're getting those podcasts, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. A shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. We continue our conversation now with Sun Devils wide receiver Caleb Black. Caleb, let's go ahead and talk about more of the changes. We talked about Coach Arroyo coming in, but there was a very sudden change in spring ball when coach Rashad samples took a new position over with the Oregon ducks football program. And we'll start there. What was, what was kind of the reaction, not just from you, but from the receivers room when coach samples had a new opportunity in front of him that uh, he took for himself. And what was kind of the mindset of like, Oh wow, this is really sudden. What, what kind of went through your guys' heads? Um, yeah, it was a sudden change. Um, honestly, like a lot of us weren't, weren't expecting it to happen. Um, to be honest, some of the older guys weren't too surprised. Some of the older guys weren't too surprised, but I know myself and a few, a few of the other receivers weren't, um, expecting him to move, but all in all, we was, we, we were happy that he was able to get a, um, a, a better opportunity for himself and wishing wishing the best there was a little bit of in between from Mm -hmm. when coach samples left to when coach heinz ward ended up coming to the university in between that time working a lot with coach arroyo and coach dillingham what did practices kind of look like for you guys as you were adjusting to getting ready for a new positional coach to come in. What did those practices look like? Um yeah, Dilly Dilly uh stepped in a lot during that time period um with us and also coach uh Brady, our assistant wide receiver coach. Um for the most part it was it was the same same speed. Um we you know with no coach, you know we we really we really like took it upon ourselves more to make sure that we were um, performing at the right level um, every day in practice. But Dilly, Dilly stepped in a lot, and Coach Brady stepped in, stepped up for us during that time period. What did that mean for you guys to have your head coach who has a whole team to worry about, yeah, and then commit more time? to making sure that you guys were able to keep up and not slow down because you didn't have your coach with you. What did that mean for you guys? Yeah, that, 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 that meant a lot to us for real, because it just showed us like how much he really loves his players, to be honest. Um, because he was in the memes, meme rooms with us. Uh, we was having personal meetings with him as a receiver group. Uh, and, Speaking about practice, he was coming coming over to our uh, to our little area to make sure we was doing doing right in the drills and everything. So uh, honestly, yeah, it was just it was just like you know what I'm saying you can't you can't never um really real really real for that one. That's all I can say for real. And then Coach Hines Ward arrives. We'll start basic. What was your reaction when? who is probably he's not there yet. You have to imagine he's probably going to be in the NFL hall of fame yet someday. Yeah. What, uh, what was that like when you got the news of like, Hey, two time Super Bowl champion, Heinz Ward's going to come and coach up this position room. What kind of went through your head? Yeah. Like I said, we was having meetings with Dilly. Um, and like one of the meetings w- were, was about, um, who, who we wanted to come in next as our coach to be our coach and then like he was he was basically like explaining people he didn't even give us any names yet but he was explaining the person like based on like their personality and how they act and how they carry themselves 
And then, like, basically, basically, we picked um, Coach Coach Ward by um, all the all the attributes that he named. And then he told us after, and it was like it was kind of crazy at first. Honestly, I didn't even. I really like. I knew it was, but I didn't know how like crazy it would be for us for real. Like I had to do some more research for real. But like, it was, it was, it was, it was crazy. I ain't gonna lie. It was kind of crazy. It was cool though. Was it? Was it kind of almost like a starstruck moment when you first got to meet Coach Ward? He's like right in front of you, kind of thing. Like I can tell you, just as a football fan, when we're sitting there in spring ball and. Heinz Ward is, you know, 15 feet away from me. You're like, that guy played a long time in the NFL. What was that like for you to actually be sitting there and taking in everything that he's telling you? Yeah, honestly, it's like, it's like nothing but inspiration. Like, I guess it's like, it's like just that feeling like, man, like, you know what I'm saying? He already been there and done there where I'm trying to be at and did it at the highest level and did some stuff no you won't see nobody else do so like it's just like you gotta respect it so i mean but it's like he he a real down to earth like you know what i'm saying stand up guy so like even with his name it, it could be it could be so easy to forget when you're just talking to him to be honest with you like i feel like i can be talking to him you know what i'm saying my uncle or something <laughs> What are the differences that you've noticed going from Coach Samples to Coach Ward? Is it a lot of terminology that's different? Is it what he's asking you guys is different? What What are the differences you've noticed from coaching side of things, from what Samples wanted to what Ward has wanted from you guys? Yeah, um, I feel like, like the terminology side, you know, um, with him just – Knowing a lot from based on experience is like he can break stuff down a little more easier to us. Like I say, like that's one of the most the best changes for real because like it ele- like it, ele- it kind of elevated everybody's game in a way because it was like he was able to tell us certain things to make the game easier. But he was only here like spring ball when he came to spring ball like. He was only here for a short period of time compared to Sam. So it was like, you know, with the stuff that he was able to tell us to um, get us on track and keep us on track and get us better, uh, it was just, I feel like it was like, I'm saying, I was kind of, I was kind of crazy to be honest. It was like, it was just all the experience that he got. It's just everything he say, it's like a nugget. You would just take and put it, take it take it put it to your game now coach samples leaving wasn't the only big change in fact the biggest piece of media news that came out from the from the sun double spring ball was that Jaden rashada entered the transfer portal when he left how did the wide receiver room come together and rally together was it was it kind of like hard at first or was it a mindset of like you know it doesn't matter if richie bradshaw's throwing us the football or if tom brady's throwing us the football we're gonna be we're gonna be the best that we possibly can what what was kind of going through your guys's head when quarterback one from last year transfers yeah like just like coach simp to be honest like it was kind of it was kind of crazy. Like, it was just, like, out of nowhere, for real. And that was our number one QB, and we was expecting to do a lot with him. But um, as a receiver group, you know, I feel like the mindset for majority of the group was 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 exactly that, for real. Like, it really didn't matter who was throwing us the ball. You know what I'm saying? We, we were just going to be able – we were going to be the ones to dictate how the game was going to go. But uh, – at the same time, it still was some people that was kind of like it was um, still a hard decision if they wanted to, you know what I'm saying, be here without our number one QB, not here. So, but for the most part, most of the receiver group had that same mindset. Like, you know, we really, we really didn't, it really didn't matter who was throwing us the ball. 
you do have Sam Levitt in the room. And there was a lot of buzz during spring ball that Levitt was earning himself the right to be the starting quarterback on the team. How do you feel about Sam Levitt? Obviously, he's new to the program, but was it was it something that you guys were able to click with him pretty quickly? What about Sam really stands out to you uh, for yourself, let alone for the wide receiver room? Yeah, Sam Sam's a great guy. Um, for me personally, I just is everybody could see that he he works hard in the weight room and in the film room and, every, and everything he does. Uh, he takes his job serious, to be honest. Uh, and you know, I feel like he's a guy that we could rely on and have him put the team on his back. You know what I'm saying? Because he takes he takes everything serious. I'm, I'm not going to tell no lies, like, and he work hard. So that's how I feel about him. But I know everybody else feel the same way. Like, he work hard. Everybody can see that. And that was going to be my next question, is how everybody else is kind of responding to the change with Sam Levitt. Now, he is – he's someone who was also highly recruited. Jaden Rashado was a four-star mm-hmm. out of high school. Sam Levitt was a four-star out of high school. What are some of the strengths that you've noticed – with Sam Levitt in in limited time that you've gotten to work with him, but what are the things that stand out to you that are like, yeah, that's something that Sam is really, really good at. Yeah, I would say his um just his he's able to read the field. Like, and you're talking about like football wise, right? Because he came like during spring. But um yeah, like he just he's a he's a good quick decision maker. And he good on his feet too. Like and he and he tough and he a tough guy. Like he don't even be trying to go down for real. But it's a it's a list of things I can say for real about bro. But like I say his quick decision making and he not finna just throw. You know, like he really he accurate with the ball too. I'll give him that. We're gonna start winding down and we're gonna take a look at your expectations for year two, not just for yourself. But for the team as a whole, we'll get into that in just a moment. This is the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Passion, drive, and patience. The winning formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And the eBay guaranteed fit means that your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because the eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusion supply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers and again wherever you get your podcasts hit like subscribe turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content we are winding up our conversation here with sun devils wide receiver caleb black as we wind down we of course got to take a look at year two for the sun devils for the offense for yourself and we'll start with yourself. What are what are your goals? What are your expectations? What do you want to see from yourself heading into year two? And that could look like however many yards you want. Or it could look like I want to be this kind of role for the player. I want to be the leader. I want to be one of the one of the guys that gets the ball in more ways than one. What are your expectations? What are your goals for yourself this year? Yeah, obviously I want to get back. I want to get back to that field and get on that field more. Um, make the most of every opportunity I get, and and show that I can be one of the a leader on the team and a guy that a guy that guys can count on. You know what I'm saying, and for me, that's really like the main thing right now. Like making the most out of every opportunity and being a guy people can count on. What are the expectations that you might have for 
all the wide receivers as a whole. Is there any milestone you guys are looking for? Is there any statistic you guys are looking for? Is there any like unifying goal? Like everybody, Caleb Black, Jordan Tyson, Xavier Guillory, everybody has this goal for the mm-hmm. wide receiver room. Yeah, for us, like I know we be talk, I know we be talking about a whole lot of different stuff, but like I know everybody on the same what page with trying to be one of the best receiving cores in our um conference. But like I can't really tell you too much for us as a whole, but I know that's one of that's one of the main um things because we know how our room looks and we know what we can do. So we just want to show that you know what I'm saying that we really one of the best rooms around. What are your goals that you want to see from the quarterback? Now, this is this is obviously something that you guys are going to have a lot of a lot of weight in because mm-hmm. you know Sam Levitt or Trenton Bourget or Navi Bruzan or whoever it is at quarterback, Jeff Sims, they're gonna be getting the ball to you guys a lot. Mm-hmm. What do you guys want to be able to see from the quarterbacks by the end of the year and say, you know, we did a really good job? helping Sam or Trenton be able to do X. Mm-hmm. What are, what are your, what are your goals that you want to see from the quarterbacks? Um, I'll say like from what I've seen so far, like, you know what I'm saying? They've been pretty, they've been pretty on it, but for us, like I'll say like, you know what I'm saying? Being able to trust, trust our guys in in certain situations like uh, Jordan or X or Troy or myself, like in certain plays or um, the deep balls throwing it around, like when we need to, or just taking a shot. You know what I'm saying? I know Sam for sure and I'm not afraid to take any shots, but um, you know what I'm saying? Just as far as like how I want to see how the season, compared to how the season went last year to this year, I know that's what we're trying to see a lot because a high room is looking again, to be honest. Uh it's a room where we can take a lot of shots. We can score from from a three yard slant. Like, yeah, it's like And for yourself, is there anything you're looking for? You want a certain amount of yards, amount of touchdowns, anything that you are having a hope for for by the end of the year, like or hanging above your locker. You have a sticky note and it says I want this. I want this many receiving yards. I want this many touchdowns. Is there is there anything that you specifically want for yourself? Um, like I did say, making the most of every opportunity. But if I had to like put a put a um, not only like put a pin on it, I'll say. Like, I'm going to start here, like, with 15 catches again. 10, maybe 10, 10, 15 catches again. And and on touchdowns, I'm going to say the sky's the limit for the touchdowns. There you um, go. I don't even want to say a number for the touchdowns. I'm going to just say the sky's the limit for the touchdowns. We want the most. The most. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most. <laughs> Perfect. All right, Caleb, I appreciate you sitting down, having a conversation with me. Before we wind down, is there anything that you want to say for yourself, anything you would like to promote, or anything that you just want to put out there before we wrap things up? Uh, I don't really know what I'm going to say for myself. I'm good, man. Awesome. Caleb, I appreciate you for tuning in. I appreciate you guys for stopping by getting to know Caleb Black a little bit better wherever you get your podcasts hit like subscribe turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content I appreciate you guys for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day I'll see you guys next time and until then you keep it locked right here on locked on Sun Devils <laughs>